Hey there, Writing Workshop. Let's talk about ACT style English questions. I wanted to run a grammar quiz this week for two reasons. One is that it's been a little while since I quizzed you over new grammar, so there's a number of concepts I haven't quizzed you over yet, especially apostrophes, quotation marks, and then everything we've done this week with verbs. The other reason is that I wasn't super impressed with our progress on our week three and week four grammar quizzes. I gave those quizzes back to back and allowed the higher score of the two to stay in the gradebook. And I still notice that we can do better. So I'm hoping that with a little bit of instruction this time, a little bit of strategy talk, um, I can help you do better on ACT style English questions. What I want to do in this video is talk through a couple of things. First of all, notice I gave a 16 minute time limit for 20 questions. Even that is a little bit slower than the pace you'll want to work through on the English, on the ACT English test because on that one they give you 75 questions in, in 45 minutes. The way that they do theirs is they'll give you five reading passages, and then each passage has 15 questions. The majority of those questions, though, they just pull individual sentences out of the passage and ask you uh, to correct grammar or word choice or phrasing in those sentences. So my recommendation when you're taking the real ACT English is that you, um, I would say you do not need to read the entire passages, what I generally do is I will do as many of the easy questions as I can first, go through the entire test, then go back to each passage and, and solve the, or answer the uh, more complex ones as well. I'll give you an example of a more complex question within this quiz. So I just want to look through some question types here. So notice this first one right here. These go in random order, so your first one may not be my, my first one. It says, Mr. Scheuer had shown us the Godfather in class yesterday. Notice that the options that they give us are no change. Any, gra any grammar question, they'll give you no change as an option. And then they give us three different tenses in this question. That tells us that this is a verb tense question. We just have to decide what tense this sentence needs to be in. The word yesterday gives us a clue that we need the past tense here. But right now this one's written in past perfect. So what we should do is just identify which ones work best. Simple past would be showed for this one. What we might note is we also have the Eliminate Choices button here. This gives us a visual clue on what we can rule out. I hope we know that had showed is not grammatical English at all, and shows is present tense. That one absolutely doesn't work. So you're basically left to, to debate between no change and showed if you're not sure. We need the simple past, not the past perfect here. There are a couple more question types I want to look through. I'll cut out any of these that I don't want to talk through so I don't show every single question. All right, we get to number seven here. Seven for me might be a different question number for you. Word choice questions. So notice I don't have no change as an option. This is a word choice or vocabulary question. Sometimes the ACT will throw these at you. It says, Mr. Forky shook as the black bear started huffing at him. That is a true story. Ask Mr. Forky about the time that he um, came face to face with a black bear. It's an interesting one. As it is used in this sentence, the word shook most nearly means to. So sometimes uh, the ACT will ask you about, a, about what a word means, a vocabulary word. Shook here, to shake can mean a number of different things in our language. So they're looking for the correct usage here. Does it mean to tremble, to dance, to be confused, or to take someone's hand? Maybe this one's obvious to you, maybe not. But again, eliminate choices. Process of elimination can help. He's definitely not shaking anyone's hand. And he's probably not dancing here either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be dancing if a black bear, if I was feet away from a black bear, right? He, it's either shook in its slang definition to be confused or worried, or it's to actually tremble, to shake. Obviously, that one's our correct answer for this one. Okay, so we get to a subject verb agreement question right here, like we covered in our last little video. Mrs. Tan's classes be fun this year. We have to figure out which form of to be is, is correct agreement-wise with classes right here. This might be a good place for what I call the plug-and-chug method uh, on the ACT. W one thing you can do on the ACT is try out every answer and see which one works best. I hope we know that no change is, no, is not an option right here. We might say this in conversation, but the ACT does ask for the best answers and for the ones that are best stated in grammatical English. So we can't use slang. Being, Mrs. Mrs. Tan's class is being fun this year. That's not a complete sentence. Mrs. Tan's classes are fun this year. Mrs. Tan's classes is fun this year. Are sounds best to me, and that does work best with subject verb agreement as well. Classes is plural, are is plural. And the last question I want to show you is six for me right here. As I said earlier, um, each passage on the ACT English section is going to give you anywhere from like two to three questions 
that are a little bit longer in how they're written and require a little more time and thinking, a little more time and thought to answer. One strategy you might think through if answering all 75 questions in time is tough for you is to save any of these questions for last. That way you're not taking guesses on easy questions in the fifth passage. Answer all the easy questions first, all the grammar questions first, then come back to longer questions like this one or whole passage questions. For this one, notice that no change is not an option because they're asking a different type of question. What is the best way, keyword best, all caps, to fix the following run-on sentence? Suarez searched frantically for higher ground. As lava poured down the mountainside, he lunged for a vine and climbed it to safety. Notice that the uh, ACT is telling us that the issue is a run-on, so we just have to decide what method best fixes it. Do we split it after mountainside? Do we use a period? Again, plug and chug, see if that works. Should we use a semicolon after ground? Should we omit? Omit means to delete. Should we delete and, and climb it to safety? Does that fix the problem? Or do we move the first part of the sentence later on? Suarez searched frantically for higher ground. If we pop that on the end of the sentence, does that fix the problem? I'll leave that up to you to plug and chug. But one thing I might suggest with your considering your time limit is that you do all the easiest ones first and come back to this one later, just because this one requires a little more time, a little more thinking, a little more testing out to figure out what works best. There is one more thing I should mention about ACT uh, multiple choice questions as well. And it's usually that since the ACT is asking you for the best answer for every question, that usually means that two of the options they give you are pretty bad and two are pretty good. Um, so uh, let me see if I can find an example. We'll go back to, we'll look at number one again, right? On our Mr. Scheuer example, right, we noted that had showed and shows are pretty bad. So we eliminated them pretty quickly. Showed and had shown are, sound much better. And from there, we just have to decide what is best. Obviously, showed is best. Mr. Scheuer showed us the Godfather in class yesterday is a much better sentence. So just as a reminder, use that process of elimination. On most ACT style, um, or most ACT English questions, you can comfortably eliminate two answers and come down to a 50-50 guess, even if you have to guess. By the way, there's no guess penalty on the ACT. You should make sure you answer every question, but to limit the number of questions you have to guess on, once again, you should answer as many easy questions as possible first, then come back to trickier ones um, at the end of your test. Best of luck to you as you take this. This is only a 20-point formative assignment, so it's not as heavy as your other grammar quizzes have been. I think I'll throw another summative grammar quiz your way in another couple weeks here, just to see if we can improve grades overall using that. At the end of the semester, you'll have a summative grammar test, but I haven't decided whether that's going to be out of 50 or 100 points. Just depends on what Mr. Forky and I want to do.